If you've watched a Mario Kart 64 speedrun, you've probably seen many fantastic glitches being used throughout the run. Typically, these are found over the course of time as runners find new ways to break the game. Mario Kart 64 is a bit different, however, with the majority of skips being used in runs today being found shortly after the game's release, and all by the same person. That's what we're looking at today, how the first Glitch Hunter broke the game in an age before the internet and online communities. This is how David Wan changed Mario Kart 64 forever. When Nintendo 64 released in 1996, it would only take four months before Super Mario Kart saw its 3D sequel appear on the console, debuting February 10th of 1997. This would ignite competition in living rooms everywhere, but none so much as that of David Wan, who wanted to push the game to its absolute limit. This was well and before the All Cup skip speedrun had been thought of, but time trials were well and alive in this era. With times documented on the official Nintendo forum and through magazine submissions, David would discover 12 different skips and shortcuts in Mario Kart 64, all within 5 months of the game's release. It wouldn't take long for all the top players to become aware of them, and as we'll see, even Nintendo themselves. Some of these glitches are still being used in runs today, and others laid the foundation for the discovery of other fantastic skips. So let's look at the Glitch Man's first discovery. Before the American release of the game, Japanese players were already aware of this lap skip on Donkey Kong's Jungle Parkway. By backing up from the start line into the cave, you can line up a jump that will have you clip through the wall and fall through the level, landing in the water below. While making this jump, you'll cross the finish line, resulting in the game awarding you with a lap. Since no items are required, you can use this in time trials and skip speedruns. David didn't discover this skip, but he did perfect it. With a different trajectory, he found that instead of crashing through a level and landing in the water, you could instead land back into the cave while still getting credit for the lap. This saves the time of getting picked up by Lakitu and is the premier method in time trials and the all cup skip speedrun still used to this day almost 25 years later. Juan's next contribution to Mario Kart 64 skips would be huge, with a glitch that cut out an entire loop of track on Toad's Turnpike. Within a month of the game's release, he fell through a guardrail on the track, but couldn't find a reliable setup to replicate the glitch, so it sat in the back of his mind as something to explore later. It's worth looking at his methodology here, because he did two things specifically. The first was looking for exploits around the lap triggers, and the second was trying out a habit he picked up while playing Super Mario Kart of jumping into walls to stifle the effects of a collision. Keeping with his Super Mario Kart instincts, he applied the logic to Toad's turnpike. He found that the cart would get stuck in the guardrails when you tried to jump over them, which almost broke his habit of trying this move. Old habits die hard, however. And with a few more attempts, David found a skip that changed the track forever. Since Toad's turnpike is shaped like a figure 8 that has an overlapping section, Juan tried jumping the rail on the higher portion of the track to see what would happen. To his surprise, this time his cart jumped the rail and fell into a lake below, much like on DKJP. From here, Lakitu pulled him out and placed him further on the track than where he jumped off, saving a significant amount of time. He wasn't done here though. While exploring this glitch, he noticed that while falling outside the level, you could see the cars and trucks driving along the track, which led him to believe that with the right angle, you could jump from the higher section and land on the lower section without having Lakitu pick you up, saving more time. This proved to be true, and was the premier method of saving time in this track in time trials and all cup skips but due to a recent breakthrough by Forest 64 involving more Lakitu abuse, Juan's method has been retired, but for over 20 years, it enjoyed glitch longevity. This next skip we're looking at is one that you're likely able to pull off yourself with 10 minutes of practice. While following the theme of Lakitu abuse in the previous glitches, this one differs in the execution, as you're not clipping through walls or falling into water below the level. Instead, 
You're going to drive backwards from the start line to get yourself positioned on the bridge. Once there, drive to the right corner of the bridge heading right of the start line and jump just before you touch the ground connecting to the bridge. Keep driving at this angle out into the snow and eventually Lakitu will pick you up and place you down on the bridge. Once you cross the finish line from this setup, you'll get credit for the entire lap. Repeat this two more times and you can finish three laps in just under 30 seconds. When David discovered this in May of 1997, he sent out an email and posted to a few different websites, N64HQ, which is now defunct, and the official Nintendo bulletin board system, which redirects to Nintendo's current website. It wouldn't be until the November 1997 issue of Nintendo Power that the mainstream audiences would get a taste of this glitch as the magazine ran a column explaining the setup and execution, with no mention of David, much to his chagrin, which led to him creating his own website to chronicle his glitch hunting. Currently one of the most busted tracks in Mario Kart 64, Choco Mountain had humble beginnings when David began hunting for skips and glitches. Applying his wall jump method from Toad's Turnpike, he found a few different places on the track that would have you jump walls and mountains to land on the other side, skipping ahead in the lap. The most notable that are still used today in the live meets and all cup skips runs are the two that take place right before the section with the falling boulders. By jumping off of this hill into the mountain, you're able to clear the out of bounds area and reach the other side of the track right before the finish line, cutting off the final hairpin loop of the track. Following the same path, if you miss the first jump, there is a backup skip just before the boulder section where the track has the other side of the loop raised above the gray rock texture. If you jump right before colliding with this section of track, you can get up on the raised portion and head to the finish, serving as a decent backup if you miss the first jump. This trick came in handy in the finals of the 2015 Euromeet Shortcut Versus event when Zorin Tinter used the skip to steal first place from Matthias Rustemeyer, keeping him alive in the tournament and forcing another track to be played to decide the victor. Yoshi Valley is another track that involves Lakitu abuse, but the setup is a bit different than what we've seen on previous tracks. When playing time trials, you're given three mushrooms to use, and David was trying to see if he could use them to jump from the hill where the start line is located to the long section of track in the valley. He wasn't having much luck at completing a jump across this gap, but on one of his attempts, something strange happened. Instead of being pulled up by Lakitu and reset back to a starting position, Juan was surprised to find out that he'd skipped an entire lap when Lakitu set him down. This led to some intense investigation as to what was going on and it wouldn't take long before he figured out what was happening. Normally, if you boost off of this area and make the jump, Lakitu will pick you up and you won't skip the lap. But if you angle towards a specific section of the wall and manage to hit this line after you jump, when Lakitu picks you up from your tumble, he will credit you with the entire lap as he sets you down. Since time trials give you three mushrooms, it didn't take Juan long to put together a run where he hit all three skips in succession, and in 1997, sometime after he discovered the trick, he'd post a time of 1.13.36, the first recorded time trial on Yoshi Valley shortcuts. There are numerous other contributions that David Juan had to Mario Kart 64, from skip discoveries to optimizations of existing glitches. He was largely responsible for popularizing and distributing many of the ones seen in this video, from the early player email chains and the various magazines and websites that he submitted to. Mario Kart 64 isn't the only game he hunted and recorded glitches for, but that's for another video. For now, carters will just have to be thankful that the Shortcut King provided them with so many discoveries, making him a legend in this game's history. And legends never die. Thanks for watching.